We're down at Hunter Gather Cook in the Treehouse Kitchen. Uh, today we are going to be making some Bambi burgers. So we've just taken apart deer, so here we've got a front haunch which we're going to use for our burger mint. Uh, we've also got some lardo, we've got some cool fat here, and we've got some truffles just to make them extra decadent. So I'm going to hand you over to Dougie, who's going to show you how we make our burgers. <laughs> First thing, we've got uh, this beautiful bit of venison, freshly butchered. It's the front haunch. For the fat content of the burger, we've got some lovely lardo that we cured ourselves up. So if I just cut it down the middle here, and then slide the knife along, similar to skinning a salmon or any other fish, we'll just chop it into chunks so that it's manageable for the mincer. So now we're just gonna mince the meat and the, the fat together. You can just drop a couple of the bits of lardo in with it as well. They'll, they'll be easier to mince with the meat pushing it through rather than by themselves. If you don't have lardo and you want to use some pork belly or back fat, but when you're using those, make sure it's cooked through. And you can start seeing it popping out the end here. Cool, so we just finished mincing the venison there. Uh, you can see the lardo has been chopped through it. But seasoning wise, I've got some salt here. We've got some juniper berry and peppercorn, very sort of classic flavours to go with venison. And then a really nice uh, wild herb from here, it's ground ivy. But I'm just going to get Dave in. Dave, if you could go get me a, a nice sort of handful of ground ivy, that'd be absolutely perfect. Well, Cheers. Here. Yeah. What we're actually after is some, uh, well, what we call these days, uh, ground ivy. It used to be called ale hoof because they actually used it in, in the making of beer right up until sort of 1700s. That's what they used instead of hops. The main way to identify it, once you once you know, is the uh, is the is the smell. Yeah, you get a very sagey uh, sagey aroma when when it's uh, when it's crushed up. I have one leaf. This is a creeping. Um, Perfect, nice handful. Excellent. So the ground ivy's got the perfect sort of flavour to go with this venison mix. So we're just gonna plump them in some water and you just give it a little swish around in the water. If you lift it out of the water rather than pouring it, it goes away from the dirt and just drop it in a colander or a sieve or onto some tissue paper or something. We've got them washed. Roughly chop it up and it'll go mixed in with the rest of the pergaments. Excellent, so we've got all the ingredients now. We can do the fun bit. Mix it up, and then we can start eating some really tasty burgers. So we've got our mince and lardo going in. We've got the ground ivy, so it's about a handful. This sort of just the proportion to your meat. I mean, your deer doesn't come in weighed for you. And then uh, a good grind of salt to season. The lardo was cured, but um, it's not gonna bring too much of a salty flavor there. And then we just got a little bit of peppercorn and juniper. Gives a sort of a really nice sort of scent of gin, um, which is a, a nice accompaniment to venison. I'll just scrape that in. It's really just a couple of peppercorns and a couple of juniper berries. Otherwise, it tastes too much like gin. It's not really a problem for me. So just make a claw in the hand and just give it a good swirl around. Make sure that seasoning is nice and evenly through. I don't have to add egg. It's just nice fresh mint without fat. It sort of naturally sticks together. Roll it into a ball and just shape it and it makes a, a rather tasty looking burger. So now we're gonna wrap it in the cool fat. It's, a, it's actually a very sort of thin, fibrous mesh of fat and it just beautifully renders. It doesn't have much of its own sort of flavor but it brings unctuousness and just, well, you can't have too much fat really in it, can you? 
So sort of open it out like a sheet. It's like nature's cling film. And then put it on there. Most butchers will have some cool fat. It might be frozen in a block, but it's pretty inexpensive. Excellent, so now they're finished. Uh, they're ready to put on the skillet. You're gonna sear them, get it really hot, and get some really delicious venison flavor out of that. Gently on, they're gonna sizzle quite a lot. And the fat's just beginning to render now, and it'll go nice and golden brown, and just melt into our delicious wild venison mince. So we can just lift it up and have a peek. The beautiful golden brown color there. So it's just cooked hot on each side, and then the temperature carries on in, and you've got that beautiful pink sort of rareness in the middle. Yeah, look at that one. Nice. They're looking pretty delicious already, I'd say. And I'm going to let them rest for a couple more minutes. Here we've got the burgers. They're nice and rested now. I'm just going to lift them in to the buns. I've got some fried onion. Just on the top. A little bit of brie. So these are looking really tasty already. Uh, the brie and the burgers are gonna be delicious, but if you melt that cheese, then you get an even better product. And if you're gonna use this at home, do be careful. And you can just come in with the blowtorch and you'll see it beginning to melt and it'll start to crisp up. However, if you turn one of these upside down, but you end up making a good sort of flamethrower, just hold it above. <laughs> Hey Nick, come, come have a look at these guys. I'm just gonna turn that off. Oh, I can smell something being blowtorched. Yeah, I managed to not set fire to the treehouse and I've made yeah. you a very delicious burger. Look at that, I think, I think though we could maybe make it that up more decadent. Right, what do you think we're missing? I think, I think a, bit of, a bit of truffle. Yeah, fair enough. Why, why not? So maybe just simply... Oh. I think it's time for us to set our teeth into that. Mm. 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 So it's a beautifully rare burger, but completely safe because it's just freshly cooked. We don't have any raw pork fat in there. You've got the cured pork fat and then the pork fat on the outside that was cooked on the fire. So it's, it's like a cross between a burger and tartar. So go out, take apart a deer, Make your own one, and we'll see you guys next time. Morning, we're down here at Hunter Gather Cook. First things first, we're gonna get some breakfast on the go. We've got some huevos rancheros. But before that, we make some proper coffee, and I'll show you a nice little campfire trick to make perfect filter coffee.